Good evening. Welcome to meetings with our community. Many New Yorkers don't have access to a vehicle, so schlepping an old TV or computer to be recycled isn't easy. That's why the Department of Sanitation partnered with Electronic Recyclers International to create eCycle NYC. This free and convenient electronics recycling program is for residential buildings over 10 units. Learn more at nyc.gov slash eCycle. infinite blessings. I have been invited to speak about the opportunities and the challenges that each sign of the zodiac will have for this new year, 2015. We have areas who uh, have had a lot of professional challenges and this year will have the blessing of Jupiter and Saturn that will ease those challenges by having a, a lot of uh, support from Leo and Sagittarius. Taurus people with Pluto uh, in good aspect to their sun uh, will bring them a lot of opportunities uh, in business uh, and in professional life, especially uh, business that are well structured. They have had challenges there, but because of the good aspects the art is here, uh, this will flourish. Gemini will be making a strong partnerships, especially with foreign people, with the presence of Saturn in Sagittarius, and it will have, it will have great opportunities through Jupiter in Leo that will give them um, a lot of opportunities to be in communications, writing, television, radio, and uh, the presence of a lot of planets in Aquarius to start the year, like right now, uh, it's good that they are in the social life 
very active. Cancers have had a lot of challenges with Pluto uh, in, ca in Capricorn opposing them and Uranus in Aries, but the presence of Neptune in Pisces will ease their way in a spiritual life, higher education, immigrational uh, issues, and um, they should pursue all careers that deal with health and taking care of children and people that are affected socially. Leo people will have a great year because Saturn already came out of Scorpio, even though we'll be back in Scorpio for the summer. But uh, the presence of Jupiter there will bring Leos to the limelight and they will have great success through children, through romance, through creative projects and everything that deals with education and their strength will be at the max. Virgos uh, can expect a lot uh, from partnerships and um, marriage uh, partners um, but it will have uh, some chaotic uh, situations uh, in the home and in relationships by expecting too much from others. Um, it's a sign that is very uh, perfectionist uh, that uh, should apply that more uh, to their education and uh, business travel. Um, Libras will have challenges in the home and will have challenges in relationships but because Jupiter is in Leo and Saturn is in Sagittarius they will get a lot of benefits to brothers, sisters, uh, people that are akin mentally and their friends and teachers. As Scorpios have Neptune in Pisces in favor for the next uh, 14 years about, um, they will have great experiences through a spiritual life, um, a lot of special blessings in romance, children, um, this is very active in creative projects that deal with dance and deal with, it, with everything that deals with uh, pleasures and projects that are occult. Uh, Sagittarius uh, has Saturn as a visitor for the next two and a half years. Uh, it's a moment for them to um, concentrate on their academic fields. Um, to perfect uh, their way of being through morality and through uh, spirituality and religion and it's a good moment to form a good education. Uh, Capricorns have had a very important uh, position these years in, pol in, pol in politics, in big business, all of that, but it has been a war all the time. Um, they have opportunities to people of Pisces and um, Taurus and Virgos will be great allies in this period. Uh, the Aquarian people have a great ear for marriage and for associations with legal people and people of the government and artists. They also will have a, a better relationship with friends in which they are more in harmony in ideas and in pioneering projects. Pisces, um, it will be a year of dreams, but they can also be awakened from dreams and illusions they might have had. Um, they, they must uh, definitely face reality, uh, but definitely be more and more inspired so they can create beautiful words in the arts in, and also channel the, the energy to heal people. And it's important for them uh, this year in relationship to profession and achieving important projects. Many New Yorkers don't have access to a vehicle, so schlepping an old TV or computer to be recycled isn't easy. That's why the Department of Sanitation partnered with Electronic Recyclers International to create eCycle NYC. This free and convenient electronics recycling program is for residential buildings over 10 units. Learn more at nyc.gov slash eCycle. Now what we expect from our leaders 
We should start with Obama, who was born August 4th, 1961. Saturn was blocking him for a long time uh, this last year. And um, now that uh, Saturn is out of Scorpio, they will achieve what they are into, uh, the Leos. And uh, in this case, the president uh, will have um, great expression of power in the next two and in the next two years and um, he will have a better relationship with foreign countries will make great uh, projects and will make great initiatives to better relationships with powerful countries and with countries that are not so powerful and this um, way of expressing his um, uh, his way of expressing a disciple uh, will be very um, rewarded by um, having more and more allies, even though uh, in politics we'll have a great war because Pluto in Capricorn uh, still has uh, great challenges with Pluto in Capricorn, uh, with Uranus in Aries, I would say. Um, while uh, Luis Gutierrez, who is uh, uh, the congressman um, from the 4th District of Illinois, uh, he will have a lot of blessings and a lot of expansion uh, in all that deals with education, foreign relationships, um, relationships that deal with immigration, and everything that um, can be of help to our communities, um, definitely uh, he will make a mark uh, until August especially uh, and there will be great results after that uh, because Jupiter will enter the same place um, that he has his Jupiter and that will uh, bring um, that his initiatives will have um, a concrete uh, manifestation uh, in the case of um, Andrew Cuomo, who is a Sagittarius like Luis Gutierrez, uh, the presence of Saturn in Sagittarius definitely puts uh, Sagittarian people on a high level. Uh, being uh, favored by uh, Uranus and being favored by um, Jupiter, they will achieve a lot of things. But definitely, too, the presence of Neptune in Pisces will try to block um, their uh, power and their achievements so they will have also their challenges in this process. Uh, uh, John Borner, who was born uh, November 17, 1949, the presence of Saturn on top of his son definitely put him also in a very high position in this period, uh, a period that um, has been marked by a, a lot of challenges from uh, people uh, from Leos especially or uh, people from Aquarius and uh, um, people that uh, have been competing with him. But uh, Sun is coming out of the area where he, he has his son. And because Sun will be making a special um, aspects, uh, it would definitely be a good period for him uh, to achieve a lot of his goals and objectives. Um, I would say that uh, in the case of Mr. de Blasio, who is here also, uh, he's a Taurus, and uh, the, um, Neptune is on top of his moon right now. Uh, so there will be a lot of things happening that will be like uh, beyond his control. Uh, there will be challenges um, in public life, definitely, uh, things that are very confusing and um, they will be, people um, might feel deceived in many ways uh, by things that will be occurring in his life, but Pluto every day uh, comes closer to make a good aspect with his son in Taurus, so I think um, uh, there are always tests in the way of achievement. Uh, so I think that after this difficult period that might be more in the first part of the year, um, certain uh, events that are 
um, connected to finance and to um, very concrete and objective projects, uh, he will have success on them as long as he is very reserved and secretive about them and he finds um, support, especially in Capricorn people and Virgo people. So that's what I see for these major leaders. Many New Yorkers don't have access to a vehicle. So schlepping an old TV or computer to be recycled isn't easy. That's why the Department of Sanitation partnered with Electronic Recyclers International to create eCycle NYC. This free and convenient electronics recycling program is for residential buildings over 10 units. Learn more at nyc.gov slash eCycle. Hi everybody, I'm here on Air Force One, just leaving Detroit on my way to Phoenix. You know, what we're doing is we're doing a little preview of the State of the Union. Uh, there are a lot of things I want to talk about and I figured why wait uh, for two weeks. Uh, let me start describing what I hope uh, we can accomplish together uh, in 2015. On Friday I'm going to be going to Tennessee and one of the things we're going to be talking about is education. Uh, I think everybody understands it is the key to success for our kids in the 21st century. Uh, but what we also understand is, is that uh, it's not just for kids, we also have to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to constantly train themselves for better jobs, better wages, better benefits. And what I'm gonna be talking about in Tennessee is first of all what a great job Tennessee has done in all kinds of education reform. Uh, but what I'm also gonna do is announce uh, a proposal that I'm gonna be making uh, to make sure that Community college is accessible for everybody. Put simply, what I'd like to do is to see the first two years of community college free for everybody who's willing to work for it. That's right, free for everybody who's willing to work for it. It's something that we can accomplish and it's something that'll train our workforce so that we can compete in, uh, with anybody in the world. So I hope uh, you'll have a chance to tune in as we make these proposals and uh, I hope we've got a chance to uh, make sure that Congress gets behind these kinds of efforts to ensure that even as we rebound and grow uh, in 2015, uh, that it benefits everybody and not just some. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Well, it is a pleasure to be here at the High School of Telecommunications Arts and Technology as the principal and I were just discussing, I came in, the proper uh, ways of talking about that school. In our family, our kids haven't gone to MS-51 in Brooklyn, it, this school was referred to as Tela. Tela, not that whole long telecommunications, arts and technology. <laughs> I want to thank the principal, Jeanette Shepard, for her great leadership, and she has uh, continued an extraordinary tradition of leadership here at this high school. It's a high school that has gotten better all the time, and. A lot of that was due to then principal, now deputy chancellor, Phil Weinberg, who did an extraordinary job here and has passed the torch to a new generation of leadership. And Phil, thank you for your service here and now for the great job you're doing as deputy chancellor. Uh, this is an announcement that I am truly excited to make. It is uh, something that I've talked to my fellow parents about for years and years, and this is really an example of uh, the kind of thing parents want to see more of from their city government, responsiveness to the needs of parents and understanding of the lives that everyday parents live. So for so many of us, and when the cell phone ban came into effect, my daughter Chiara was in middle school, and uh, we saw the cell phone as something that uh, was fundamental to our ability as parents to keep in touch with her and make sure she was doing the right thing and make sure she where, was where she was supposed to be. And we saw it as an extension of our ability to be good parents. And then we saw our city government stand in the way of that. And I heard from parents all over the city then and ever since that they look forward to the day when the policy was changed and when uh, good parenting could be supported with a smart and sane policy on cell phones. So it's been a long time coming, but it is time now uh, to take a common sense action, which will give parents a lot of peace of mind, 
a lot better ability to do what is, I think, our most important and most sacred job, those of us as parents. The number one job in our lives is to be there for our children, and it will allow parents to do that better. And it will keep kids safer in the process, and nothing is more important than that. Uh, this city, uh, in terms of the policy of the previous administration, was simply out of touch with the reality of matter, modern parenting. Uh, it is very tough to be a parent in this city. It's very tough to be a, po a parent in the modern day. I have, think I have a group of experts behind me. I want to thank all of them for being here because it's tough. Parents are working longer and longer hours. A lot of people having more and more trouble making ends meet while trying to be good parents in an ever more complicated society. When I was growing up, there weren't the challenges that came along with social media, for example. Uh, there are so much more information available to kids. There are so many more temptations, so many more problems. Uh, cell phones are an example of a form of technology that actually cut both ways, but the plus side of it was it gave parents an ability to stay in touch with kids that we previously didn't have, and that was a crucial tool. We needed it. We needed it in this day and age. I can remember many a time, and for those of you who have teenagers or no teenagers, you might not get them on the phone to talk to them, but you would get them by text, <laughs> the preferred methodology of all teenagers. And just that, where are you, what time are you coming home, what are you doing, just getting those simple answers uh, means so much to parents and allows you to take action if you need to to keep your kids safe. So we used to have a policy that didn't understand the reality of parents. We're now going to make this a policy that works with parents so they can do their most important job. And we're doing it in a way that really respects the needs of our educators to do their job. And we spend a lot of time striking that balance. You'll hear about that from the chancellor and others. Uh, again, safety, you think about everything we do, safety comes first. Safety is a prerequisite to making sure our kids get a good education. You have to secure their safety first, and this is about uh, amplifying a parent's ability to keep kids safe. If you live in Rhode Island, Texas, New York, New Jersey, or Florida, I'm looking forward to seeing you in the coming weeks and my friends in North Carolina and South Carolina, too. When I'm not here in my district in Chicago, I have half a dozen events lined up over the next few weeks, and I'm going to be going from town to town, state to state, talking with people about the president's immigration executive actions and what it means for them, their families, and their communities in congregations and community centers and schools. And with local elected officials, I'm going to be doing outreach to educate the community of immigrants and also to mobilize the multitude of allies at the state and local level who will help millions of our immigrant neighbors come forward and register with the government. And I'll not be alone in this effort. Next week, I'll be with the distinguished gentleman from Rhode Island, David Cicilline, and with his mayor in Providence, holding an event to get people the information they need so that they can get ready to sign up with the government. From Charlotte to Houston to Los Angeles, my colleagues here in the House are pulling together events to educate their own communities, and I hope to attend as many as I can. Evangelical congregations across the nation, the Catholic Church and my own archdiocese in Chicago are stepping up to organize and host events and begin laying the groundwork for millions of people who work and live and raise families in the U.S. to come forward and pay to be temporarily spared from deportation. Labor unions, corporations, small businesses that want to help families remain together, hey, they're preparing too. And mayors, lots of mayors across the country. Apparently, when Mayor Rahm Emanuel of the city of Chicago steps forward to say he will help facilitate the enrollment of families and individuals with the federal government, other mayors say, me too, and good for them. We can all help by playing a role in implementing the immigration executive actions taken by the president that will help millions of people. Congress refuses to pass laws that channel people into legal immigration with visas, and Congress refuses to address millions of people who have lived and worked here for a decade or more, and they refuse to address any meaningful enforcement like E-Verify or at the borders and ports of entry because they would rather pay politics and play to talk radio audience. But at the White House and on our side of the aisle, we're actually taking steps on immigration that will address the anxieties of the talk radio audience and not just inflame their frustration with the current mess. Remember, not doing anything, the Republican strategy, that's amnesty. We're going to make sure that millions of American citizens can live with their family members and that we not place American citizen children in foster care by the thousands because we're deporting their parents. 
we're going to make sure that more of the employment and tax base of the country is on the books working legitimately for employers who have to follow the rules and that employers will not get to pick between a legal job market and an illegal one that is not protected by labor wa laws, wage protection, safety regulations, and yes, tax compliance. We're getting accurate information out to people to tell them that what the president announced is not immigration reform. It's not a permanent but a small step in the right direction within the confines of current law. As I said during the last Congress, and I'm repeating it again today, I will work with anyone in either party that has a legitimate idea on how to make our immigration system more secure, more legal, more orderly. Most of my fellow lawmakers in this body support legal immigration, and to make progress, we need to break with the group opposing legal immigration. We need a modern visa system that takes America beyond the current system crafted in the 80s and 90s. We need a modern enforcement with an electronic verification system that replaces a paper-based system of documentation. We need modern border security that works hand-in-hand -hand with modern visa and enforcement systems so that we channel traffic through ports of entry where commodities, cargo, and people are inspected efficiently. More militarization, more deportation, and narrow legal immigration channels have not given us greater control over the immigration process that has led us to a number of problems. If you're serious about border security, legalization, enforcement, legal immigration, then my door is always open. Tell me what you need to move forward. Do you need more fences, more high-tech visas, more immigration judges? Tell me what it will take to get this Congress out of the current rut. In the meantime, I and a lot of my colleagues are going to be out there around the country protecting American families from destruction and protecting millions from deportation. Many New Yorkers don't have access to a vehicle, so schlepping an old TV or computer to be recycled isn't easy. That's why the Department of Sanitation partnered with Electronic Recyclers International to create eCycle NYC. This free and convenient electronics recycling program is for residential buildings over 10 units. Learn more at nyc.gov slash eCycle. Thank you for watching Meetings with Our Community. We hope that you have enjoyed our show, and we hope to see you next week.